maturity that we're now taking it to the European Cooperation for Space Standardization, which is where the space wire standard is standard. I'll just describe these briefly. First of all, there's the application. We then have a layer, and over the network layer, uh, we send
presumably it must have space in the buffer at the far end of, of, of the link. So then the space at the far end of the link is say it's ready. So let's say that virtual channel one is ready. So it then sends a frame of data. So we split space of packets up into small frames. The frame is 256 bytes long. And we chop it up into frames so we can multiply that information over the link. So we say uh, it's still ready, so it's still got more data to send, there's more space at the, the buffer. Um, it sends another frame. Two becomes ready, and this is higher priority. So it then sends the frame of data. The same virtual channel becomes ready, uh, it's high priority, so it sends another frame of data. And now two and three have got no more data to send. Um, so that is virtual channel one. So we're simply the interesting thing here is one virtual channel uh, doesn't block the communication of another virtual So how do we do it? We do it in a very simple way. Everything is simple in space fiber. So we have a credit counter. And this sandwich credit counter uh, counts precedence. So precedence is like priority. It determines who goes next. The highest priority can uh, uh, go next. So the virtual channel with the highest priority can go next. So we have a, it just accumulates credit and then it spends that credit. So we can see it's actually accumulated some credit and then when it wants to send a frame of data, it spends some of that credit. Okay, so very simple. This is a simple counter. Um, these virtual channels all together and they're accumulating credit and spending credit uh, as time goes on. Um, let's say we allocated 20% of the bandwidth. So every time it sends a frame, it will drop by a certain amount. And this has only got 10% of the bandwidth. So when it sends a frame, it will drive twice that amount. Okay, so it takes a later frame. virtual channels that both want to send at the same time, so they're both each, then it's the one with the highest pressure that goes first. So in this case, uh, the maximum value that the counter can hold, we basically uh, that, that uh, maximum value, and the same with the minimum value. Okay, so that's shown how to manage bandwidth um, reservations. So we can also priority by simply adding two extra bits at the top of this counter. And that's up here. So we've got, we've got three different priority levels. Um, so the top few bits of the counter can represent the priority. So if we're priority one, then we're always going to be able to send first because we've got the highest priority. And then we've got priority two, and within that band, those three virtual channels will compete based on their precedence and then priority three. Priority and bandwidth reservation together in the same mechanism. Then, um, the price starts to babble. What's going to happen? It's going to hold its credit, it's going to threshold it to a lower level, but it's still got priority than everybody else. Okay, so we've got a problem. What we do is when we when a virtual channel reaches a threshold, we basically drop its credit properly. Okay, so temporarily it drops the lowest value possible. And then it raises some more some more credit. So we actually raise its credit up again. So this means the priority channel is constrained to the bandwidth. It can always send bandwidth whenever it wants to higher than you know, priority level two and level three. But whenever it um, starts to babble, then it's actually prevented from using more than its allocated bandwidth. Okay, so we've got that into this technology too. Okay, and then this shows, as I said, we split time up into time slots, and in a particular time slot, we can allocate a virtual channel to send in that time slot. So virtual channel can send in time slot one, virtual channel two can send in time slot three and six, in virtual channel three, virtual channel six and seven can both uh, send. So this means based on their priority and their bandwidth reservation for their precedence. Okay, so this gives us a delivery. So if you're asking to try 
phone slot and you can communicate and just you're the only person who can communicate in that phone, you've got some deterministic things to deliver. If you don't want to do those deliveries, then you can tell everybody they can communicate in any time slot and then you've basically got a priority and bandwidth reservation and so that's the if you want to have mixed quality of service, so some um, deterministic and some asynchronous communication, then you can do it like so virtual chat one is giving uh, um, virtual chat to communicate in time slot one, virtual channel two can communicate in time slot two, and the rest of the time virtual channel three through to seven can communicate based on their standard and priority. Okay. Mixed quality of service where we can have deterministic data delivery and um, asynchronous traffic over the same network. But there's a problem. If one doesn't have anything to spare, then I've just wasted a whole chunk of my network bandwidth. So that's pretty bad news. So how to get around there? Well, what we do, um, we say channel one can be allocated to time slot one. Virtual channel one, we want to have deterministic data delivery. We're allowing one, but we'll give it the highest possible priority in that, that, uh, in that um, time slot. So the they are allocated to a time slot. They're given the very highest priority. What happens now is time slot comes along, virtual channel one can send its data, it does. When it reaches these other virtual channels, virtual channels have been allocated to this time, uh, time slot. But they're given Priority. They can actually compete based on their uh, priority and standard reservation and use unused in, um, space in that, that time slot. If one becomes ready to send again, it will immediately start sending in information in that time slot. It's data delivery without any loss of network bandwidth at all. Together to give some very powerful um, uh, uh, re results or capabilities. Okay, so I want to talk about uh, fiber networks. Um, this is a fiber routing switch. So we've got four phase fiber interfaces. We've got a routing switch matrix in the middle, and which basically switches the information from the various virtual channels through virtual channels on the other. So how can we build SSO using one of these? Um, and I've, here I've just shown a, uh, a simple network with a couple of hardware instruments and um, a control processor and a mass memory. So a typical high-speed uh, data handling network. And we can switch in the middle. What we can do is take the um, channel. So we've called one network and channel six. It's being used by the control processor to configure and control all of the other instruments. So um, it gives out uh, space, you know, space packets to configure and control say, the mass memory just by uh, using space type routing. So passive or logical addressing in you know, the same way we do with, uh, with space one. So we can mass memory or we can switch it to talk to the instrument uh, number one. So we can gather housekeeping information we can do the configuration those instruments all from the control process. So that works for space five and uh, space wire networks, uh, separate from all the other locations. But in the space fiber uh, network. The other thing we want to do with this simple spacecraft is we want to a uh, simple network is we want to uh, have the instruments talk to the mass memory and send data. So we can uh, set up virtual channels then to go from instrument number one to the mass memory and then that will basically do, uh, provide that connection and also from instrument number two to the mass memory as well. So let's have a look at so now we can actually um, control the base from the instruments into the onboard mass memory just using this single router and this can interfere with the other the flow the other flows of traffic. So we've got the dash and the quality of service. Um, if you look at a slightly more um, space data handling application, we've still got the two high speeds, the control processor and mass memory, which is now in telemetry system, and got um, four more um, instruments here that are actually space wire based instruments. So existing instruments that we want to reuse, we just simply turn them into individual virtual channels of uh, space space, and they are connected to the space wire. Network. Okay, so this is becoming realistic for a space crash on board data handling. It's highly capable. Um, and we can see features 
um, broad view of the state biometers in there. If you, if you look at what you need to do with the state fiber, this is basically the network. So you from something complicated, you can start adding all the cross scratching and redundancies to this. You've got to something which is relatively simple and it's very easy to introduce the cross scratching. Imagine the case. Um, there's 
that on this particular module, we have a team connector, so you can plug in an evaluation board and uh, uh, get running the state quite very quickly. And there's also a couple of debug connectors built in. So, pre program with the start of the state five drive D core is a 32 bit interface which runs at 62.5 megahertz in the RCAS design. That gives us 2.5 gigabits per second. So, the, all the devices there are commercial equivalents of the existing space flight components. So, it means that okay, we can, uh, the TR space flight is already as high as possible. Devices in space. It's around about 20 to 25 percent of an AH1000 or an RCA, RCA1000 device. It's a new um, uh, SDA, which is much larger, called the RPG4. It's got inbuilt service, so which is very attractive to space fiber. Um, so we've uh, produced a uh, design for this. Um, we have a 2.5 gigabits per second, but they run at 3.125. Uh, the space space um, is 4 to 6 percent, and we've actually improved on that. It's 3 to 5 percent in the virtual channel. So it's a small part of uh, this SDG to make the space five in there. Basically, 1 percent of the, uh, this design targets are about 2 
it doesn't consider a network, it, it gives up some amount of guaranteed bandwidth. When you want to three percent of your bandwidth, one seventy percent, you need to put something over the other. It seems a situation where if one actually has no data to transmit, then the bus isn't being used. Yeah. So what happens in that case is okay. The Okay, thank you. 